and uh, welcome to Building a U-Shaped Business uh, with uh, Georgie and Patty. Georgie? <laughs> Patty! <laughs> So uh, today's today's topic is about uh, uh, direct outreach and talking to people without feeling salesy. Uh, this is uh, uh, if you were with us last week when we were talking about uh, introverts and selling as an introvert and marketing as an introvert. Uh, this is the um, I don't know the advice, the antidote to that. Uh, discomfort of uh, actually reaching out and touching people and talking to them and making connections. And how do we do that in a non, um, in a non salesy way? And, and specifically, how do we address the stuff that's going on up here uh, that gets in the way? Uh, so uh, with that, I will uh, turn the meeting over to my uh, uh, mindset expert. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed I have I've got my window open, so we might have extra noise today. The dog's gonna bark. And, uh, yeah, yeah, he he knows he knows how to, uh, how to how to make himself known without uh, <laughs> being sales. Exactly, exactly. Okay, here we go. How to not feel salesy when you're? Come on. Why do I always seem to have trouble getting this thing to start? Okay, whatever. Here we go. Quote of the day. Um, Shifting your focus from getting to giving is not only a nice way to live life and conduct business, but a very profitable way as well. And this is by Bob Berg, who you're going to hear a lot about Bob Berg today. Yay! <laughs> we love Bob Berg. Um, very much. I love his whole philosophy on selling. So he's the author of a book called The Go-Giver. Um, he has a, actually quite a few books, different Go-Giver books, but really, really resonate with how he does things because his focus is really on giving and not getting. And how can we kind of use this philosophy as we're building our business, getting sales, making money, none of that's taken off the table, but doing it in a way that I think really resonates with us because it really is about relationship building. It's about being human. It's about taking care of people, um, treating people like they matter. So I really, really just, I love his approach and I'm going to be talking a lot about him as I go through this thing today. Including the next slide. Including the next slide, which we are really, Woo! really, really excited about um, because um, we are going to get the absolute pleasure of interviewing Bob Berg on September 9th. Um, is there more on the slide? Yes. Okay. So he is the author of The Go-Giver. He's the no like, and trust guy. You hear us talk a lot about this, right? You want to build no like, and trust. You probably heard this outside of us. It, it's a thing. He is it's the guy. Th it's a thing, right? And uh, this is him. He's the guy. He's the guy that creates that. So yes. he's, this is, you know, his quote, all things being equal, people do business with and refer business to people they know, like, and trust. So how do we create that? So we are really, really, really excited um, to have him on our show on September 9th. He will be here. We will interview him. Uh, if you have any questions that you might like us to ask him, please let us know. There is a, you can share this with people as well. Um, we would love to have a great audience for him to, um, to get in front of more people because like I said, we really resonate with, with what he does. Um, he already has a big audience, but we'd like to bring him into our, our group too. So we're really, really, really excited about this. Uh, anything you want to add about your excitement about Bob? <laughs> oh, it's just, just, I, I'm just so, I, 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 I don't know. I, I've, I've just like, I've been talking about building no like and trust. I've been quoting the man for years, like years, years and years and years. And uh, he's going to be here and um, I have questions I want to ask him. And we were talking about this before we um, started today about asking him, like not the run of the mill questions that everybody asks, like, you know, he's got some suggested questions. And yes, his stuff is wonderful. Go read his books, go sign up for his free sales course. Um, you can get that stuff. Um, you know, he, he, it's published, right? I, I want to know what makes him tick. <laughs> like, exactly. you know, like, you know, what, um, what, what, 
what drives him? What are his internal thoughts? How did he um, overcome whatever um, got in the way um, of uh, becoming so well known? And and from this this perspective that we we don't see a lot of this idea of of giving instead of getting and uh, just this um, wonderful approach to sales. So I'm excited to see somebody um, who is famous and says the stuff that we say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a real genuine kind of guy. He is. I've been, I've been watching his, um, I was watching his uh, sales um, training course, the one that he gives for free, and, um, and just watching him. Uh, I'd read his books, like, you know, like, I was aware of him, but I hadn't seen him speak. And he just, he lights up. He's just like, he just, you listen to him talk and he gets kind of excited and he smiles and he just gets all bright and uh, he just, he just seems so, I don't know, so nice and so genuine and so friendly. And um, it's like, look, look at the smile on his photo, right? Like, exactly. Like that seems to be who he is as a person. So, um, so yeah. We're excited. We're very excited. Nobody would know. Nobody would know. Yeah, we, we hide it well. We really do. We really, really do. Um, so your permission slip today is that you have permission to slow down the sales process and actually connect with people. I think so often we are, you know, if we get into that spot where, oh, I'm trying to get to the sales conversation, I'm trying to get to the close, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that, and we want to do everything in one email or one phone call or one interaction with somebody and we kind of it's really okay to slow down to really recognize kind of the humanness in these interactions and take your time like treat people like people go slow get to know people it's really really okay so if you needed a permission slip for that you got it so one of the things we talk about a lot is direct outreach and we also talk about, you know, what's state the obvious, share the obvious. So, you know, start to think about what does direct outreach mean to you? And I was Googling around to see what it means to the internet and Google. And basically what they're saying is really is just being able to reach out to future clients, other service people, maybe it's professional associations, people you can work together, you know, possible referral relationships. But here's the real thing through personalized emails, messages, or phone calls. To me, this is what direct outreach is. It's not a mass emailing. It's not a mass message. It's really taking the time and sending personalized messages to people, whether that's email, you know, your direct social media things, phone calls, but it's a very personalized approach. So when I say direct outreach, that's really what I'm talking about. And then the other thing I want you to think about is what is your definition of selling? Because often when we think about sales and selling our products or our services, we think that we have to convince someone to buy. We think we have to maybe do a little bit of manipulation and, you know, coerce them a little bit to basically make them see that what we're selling is what they need and how do I, you know, make the clothes and force this to happen. And I really, I'm going to use Bob Berg's definition of selling because I like it and I think if you go into situations where you feel salesy and you feeling like I don't want to do this and you have a lot of resistance, I encourage you to maybe try this definition on. So what if you thought about selling as just to discover what the other person needs, wants, or desires, and you actually help them to get it? Where this is really about giving instead of getting. Because I think oftentimes where we start to get this really yucky feeling around sales is because we're going in it to get something. I need to make the sale. I need to make the money. I need this. I need to get them on my list. I need them to, I need them to do something for me. But if we can switch that and be, what can I actually do for them? It really makes this a whole lot easier. I know when I first started out and I was selling insurance, I didn't even realize I was selling insurance. I thought I was just helping people and it made it so much easier. Like it was so, so much easier if I just approach every day to how do I help this person? How can I help you? How can I help you? Oh, what do you need? Tell me your problem. Oh, okay. Way easier. I didn't feel gross or salesy. I just, I help people. So think to yourself, then what do direct outreach and sales mean to you? 
when you think about that, do you kind of feel like the guy in this picture? Is this what's coming up for you? Because here's what happens. If those are the thoughts you're having, if you believe that sales pe salespeople are gross and disgusting, if you look at what do you value and your values are in conflict with actually making sales and reaching out to people, if you think you're a pest and annoying, everyone's gonna hate you and you're gonna get faced so much rejection, or if you look at what memories do you have of your interaction with salespeople? And if your memories are say, the guy at the car a lot that was kind of pushy and sort of that what we often think of as salesy, that's going to affect your attitudes, your opinions, your beliefs, all of those things. And when these are the things that are running at an unconscious level, if we feel this is gross and yucky, it's going to be really, really challenging for us to be effective at it because these are the thoughts that, that are running. So how can we do this well? if this is really what's happening in the back of our mind. So when that's happening, what we need is, we need a little bit of a reframe. We need to go in there and maybe adjust some of those, those opinions and those beliefs and those things that we're thinking. So I wanna share a little bit today about how we can create this sort of new frame and new approach to sales and selling, all the while thinking about Bob Berg's definition of it. Think about selling as giving instead of getting. Think about adding value. You know, and we've talked a lot, Patty talked about this in one of the shows about what are the things we can be in control of, right? So we can't necessarily force people to get on our calendar, right? We can make the invitation, but we can't control what they do with that invitation. Once you are in a conversation with someone though, and you're having, whether it's a sales conversation, a get to know you kind of conversation, any of those kinds of things, what you can have control over is you can provide value. All of your interactions can be 100% successful. And Bob Berg mentions this too. If your intention is to provide value, that's it. So if I go into every interaction and I'm going to provide value, it's easier. So one of the other pieces of um, information work I really like is the work by Byron Katie. So if you start to think about one of your beliefs about sales, salespeople are sleazy. If I reach out to this person, I'm going to be a pest. Think about that and maybe run it through her four questions. So is it true? Is it true that all salespeople are sleazy? Can you absolutely know that it's true? Like 100%. How do you react when you think that thought? So when I think salespeople are sleazy, I mean, I get a visceral response in my body with that. And to think that I'm going to do that is like, oh my gosh, there's just no way. This is like an uphill battle for that. Now, who would I be without that thought? If I let that go and I change that, or you change that, would that shift how you approached reaching out to people, how you approach making conversation with someone to share about what you do to see if you could help them, if there was a way that you could make their life better by listening and offering value, would that shift for you? So each time you start to do direct outreach or have a call with someone and you start to notice these thoughts come up for you, run them through these four questions and just see what happens, right? Do your own little research here. And then so next thing I really want to encourage you to do is change your definition. Every time you think about sales, I want you to switch it to this definition that I'm just discovering. See what that other person needs, wants, or desires, and how can I help them get it? How can I help them bring more happiness into their life? Because really when we're out there searching for things and we're looking to buy stuff, we're looking to be happier. We want to make, we want to feel better. We want to make our life better. So your job in this world as this purpose-driven entrepreneur is to help people make their life better by giving them whatever it is they want. And can you do that or not? You're just gonna check and see. And the only way you're gonna know is if you have a conversation with them. So I'm bringing back one of my favorite little, uh, little diagrams, pyramids here, The Logical Levels by Robert Diltz. Because not only does this help us to identify 
where our problem might be. So if I'm thinking about sales and I'm having problem reaching out to people and struggling with my relationships and, and having these conversations, I might want to notice where in this chart could I be possibly getting stuck? So I'm going to use this, um, this diagram as an example with um, sales and outreach. So I'm going to start with purpose. So every time you get ready, if you're struggling with this, to talk to someone, reach out to someone, have conversations, I want you to think about your purpose. And I want you to think about that bigger why of why you started this business in the first place. Why did you want to do this? I'm going to make an assumption that everyone that's on this call, um, because it's typically who we tend to attract, are purpose-driven people, we're coaches, consultants, we want to make a difference in the world, so we're doing something that's, that's bigger than, um, you know, just maybe selling shoestrings or something like that. And even if you're selling shoestrings, you probably have a bigger reason why. Maybe you want everyone in the world to be able to tie their shoes, whatever it is. But I want you to be able to connect to that bigger purpose or that bigger why that you have start there then i'm going to give you i'm actually going to give you an intention i want you to set the intention that before i have this call before i send this email before i have this conversation with someone is my intention is to provide value and help people get what they want that's the only intention that i have here so my focus is very much on the other person i might get noisy for a second <laughs> And then I want to look at identity. So if you think of right now, if you think of yourself as a salesperson, notice what comes up for you. What are you saying about yourself? How do you identify if someone says you're a salesperson? What does that really mean to you? And I'm gonna give you some new statements to try on for that. What if as a salesperson, you were to shift that identity, identity to I am someone who provides value. So when someone says, oh, you're a salesperson, you're like, yes, I am 100% because as a salesperson, I am someone who provides value. I am someone who makes a difference. I am someone who cares. So if I identify as this type of salesperson, how could I possibly be salesy and manipulative and want to coerce somebody and fully go everything that I am. So we want to look at how are we identifying in this role, because sales is just a role that we have, and shift, notice what's coming up and see if you can shift to some of these things. Repeat them, say them often. Next, we're going to look at sort of the values and beliefs. So a lot of us have probably done work around um, especially because you hear me talk about it a lot, but what are the values that you hold in your life? And you hear me talk about a lot, you know, live your life with those values as your filter. So we've got this belief that you might be holding on to about what sales is, but now we're shifting that because we're moving into Bob Bird land of what that means. So as that kind of person, what kind of values might you hold as that kind of salesperson? Maybe you value authenticity honesty, kindness, compassion, empathy, fairness. If you're holding those kinds of values, how could you possibly be sleazy and gross? And if you use these as your filter for how you show up in everything that you do, including direct outreach, including sales conversations, including sharing what you do, it makes a difference. And these are those things you can, you can check in with yourself and go, oh, am I being authentic in this interaction? Maybe I feel salesy because I'm kind of trying to hide my agenda. Maybe I'm not being honest about why I want to reach out. And if that's the case, shift it. Be honest. Tell people, right? We, we're big fans of, hey, I'm doing this new thing. I'm looking for five people. I need your help. That's honest. That's authentic. That's maybe you know someone that this way I can give more value to the world. And then beliefs, which you kind of talked a little bit about in the beginning, but what would you, to be this kind of go-giver kind of seller, you know, what would you believe? Maybe you actually believe that sales is really about giving. 
Maybe you believe that money is the reward for the value you give. So oftentimes in business, we hold money as kind of our target. You know, we're encouraged to set financial goals. I want to bring in $10,000 a month, $100,000 a year. And I'm not saying money is not important because it is. However, what if we shift our belief around it that it's just the result of the value I deliver? As long as I'm giving really good value, the money's going to come. It has to. It's almost like a law or something. You know, it's like if, if I'm just focused on how can I help people and how much value can I give, the result of that is money. Almost like gravity. If I throw the ball in the air, it's going to fall down. So if I just focus on how much value can I give, the money will happen. My service makes the world a better place. If I really, really believe that what I'm doing is going to make a difference, that I'm really passionate about my work, I'm going to want to share it. Not from that place of sharing where, ooh, what can I get out of sharing this? But I'm sharing it because it's going to help people, because it brings value to the world. So some of these beliefs, it's just practice saying them. Practice saying them as if they were true. If this was really true and if you really believed this, what would that be like for you? Would it shift how you showed up? If you're having a moment where you're like, eh, gosh, I don't want to do this right now. What if you just pulled one of these up and went, no, actually, I'm excited to share what I offer because this can make the world a better place. And people always have the option of saying no. And because I really just want to help them get what it is that they want to make their life better, no is a perfectly acceptable answer as well. It's not a problem. It's okay if someone says no. With this, of course, we need certain skills and capabilities. There are certain things that we do to get better at sharing our message with the world, reaching out to people, and making sales. Absolutely. I don't think we can ignore these things. Like, you know, often I find there's kind of two camps of people. I want to just stay in this top half of this triangle, and I'm just going to, you know, visualize and say affirmations and use all of that, those things to, to make this a reality. Very, very important because we need, you know, we need our inside stuff on board. And yeah, there's some skills and some capabilities that you might need to learn. But the great thing about these things are if you're aware of some of these things that might be an issue for you, you can learn them. You can practice. There's a solution to this. So one thing you need to do is be curious. Be that curious person. Remember, I think in one of these shows I talked about, imagine if every single person you come across was like this alien being from another planet. They were so incredibly magical and you had no idea what they even were. Like, what if you approached every single person as if something you've never seen before, something you knew nothing about, but yet you have so much curiosity that you want to learn more? Ask questions learn to ask really good questions. You can look up questions. You can create a list of questions, right? You can do be prepared so that you feel a little more comfortable. You know, we talk a lot about when we're doing assessment calls or if someone reach out to you, what inspired you to reach out to me today? Tell me more about that. So where are you in your life right now? What's going on for you in your business? Where would you like to go? What would it look like if you had that? What have you tried before to get there? What worked? What didn't? What do you like about it? Ah, right? Just get yourself some good questions. What brought you to this networking event today? Ah, how do you feel about going to networking events? Do you feel comfortable in them? I don't feel comfortable about them. I just feel awkward. What were you hoping to get out of here? What would make this networking event a success for you? Do you often come to see how many people you can connect with you connect with one or two like just have some questions to create let um sort of feed that curiosity that you have for people listen 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 as a salesperson the other person your potential client your person in front of you they should be doing 80 percent of the talking and you should be doing 80 percent of the listening 
So if you find that you're in a sales conversation and you're doing more talking than the other person, you need to stop. You need to get to close out. Ask the question and be quiet. Get curious because we really want to practice our listening skills. And listening from the place of not what can I give this person, what can I get from them, but listening from that place of how can I add value here? What is it that they're really saying? What do they really need? What's important to them? Why do they want to solve this problem? Can I help them solve this problem? But listening from that place of being very, very present, not thinking about, oh, as soon as they say that, that's my clue. That's where I'm going into this transition piece. Not from that place, just being really present and listening. Give value. And through this, Bob Berg talks about whenever we're giving, it's about giving time. It's about giving attention. It's about giving education, empathy. All of these things are ways of giving. For those of you that do the assessment that Patty and I share and show you how to create, this is a huge piece of giving value. It actually allows you to do all of those things. You're spending time with someone. You're giving someone your, your, your attention. You are helping them to discern where they might be stuck, right? You're, be, you're able to educate them, but in a way that provides value to them and is not all about you. You need to learn how to build relationships. You need to learn, if you're, if you're not so good about, at this, then you need to learn how do I nurture relationships that I, that I currently have? How do I reach out to new people? How do I strengthen some of the connections that I already have? Direct outreach. You got to have it. It's got to be done. You know, if you want to build a business in the way that we're talking about building a business, if you want a relationship business, business, it requires reaching out to people. Very learnable. You can get better at this. Discovery. If you get really, really, really good at this discovery piece, everything else will be easier. When you do your sales conversations, if you master the first part of this, which is the discovery, which is finding out what people want, finding out what would bring them happiness, discovering why they want to solve this problem. Are they ready to solve it now? How am I a fit to help them solve it? If you spend a lot of time getting really, really great at that and using those discovery skills as you go through an assessment, your sales conversations are going to be easier. If you put in your time at the beginning, by the time you get to the part where you're asking for money and telling them about what you do, it's going to be easy. All of this stuff you can learn. But you need to look at this list and go, where am I strong? Where am I weak? Where do maybe I need a little more practice at? And then decided that you weren't going to you know, put in the time to do it. So then your behavior, what might you be doing as one of these go-giver sales kind of people? You're doing direct outreach. You're sending emails. You're, you're sending messages. You're making phone calls. You are reaching out to human beings in a personal way to share information, see where they're at, and see if there's kind of a mutual fit. You're having connection calls. You're checking in with people, getting to know them, seeing what, what's happening. You're doing assessments. You're having sales conversations with people. This is actually something that you do when we're building this U-shaped business that's based on relationships. You're practicing your skills. You're recognizing, oh, where could I be better? How could I improve? What if I was only 1% better in asking questions or 1% better in the discovery part of my sales conversation? What if I was more present when I was doing my assessment and had a little more flow to it? How can I practice that? Maybe I'm doing role plays, I'm reaching out to people, I'm doing the work so that I can get better. You're talking to people, all kinds of people. You're talking to potential clients, you're talking to people that might refer you, you're talking to people you've known for a, a long time to update them on what's happening, but you're talking to people. And it doesn't have to be thousands of people. Patty and I were talking about this this morning. You know, it doesn't actually require huge amounts of people when you are coming from this place of really nurturing the people in your world. It's not 
you know, you don't have to be an extrovert, super introvert friendly. Make a list of the problems you solve. I find often if I'm really clear about all of the problems I can solve for someone, it's easier for me to recon recognize an opportunity of how I can help. Sometimes I have more questions to ask if I can recognize, oh, I solve this, this, this. I encourage you to create a list of 100 problems that you can solve with, with the thing that you offer. And then your environment. Often it's, it makes it easier to do some of this work if we set ourselves up in the beginning, you know, in, a, in an environment that works for you. Again, this is all very U-shaped. So my environment might look different from your environment. These are just examples. Maybe I'm in my home office. I have a designated space where I go, where I do my work, where I send my emails, where I make my calls, where I'm ready to build these relationships. Like I kind of anchor myself into a space so that I know this is what's going to happen. Maybe it's bright. For me, I need light. Without some natural light, I just don't work so well. I feel a little bit closed in. So maybe you need it really bright. Maybe you need it tidy. Some people need it really clean and everything in its place or they can't do anything. That's not so much me. You should see all the books I have piled around me right now, right? I'm okay with that. It doesn't hinder me. But you may be one of those people where you just can't think if your desk isn't clean. So clean your desk off. Maybe you need your environment to inspire you. Maybe you need quotes on your wall. Maybe you need beautiful pictures. Whatever it is that works for you. Maybe you've got your aromatherapy thing going. Maybe there's a particular scent that, ah, that smell, when I smell that, that means connection, you know, and I'm anchoring myself into getting ready to be of service and help people. There's so many things we can do to set ourselves up for success here that we don't often think about. Maybe you need it really quiet. Maybe you don't need a dog barking, no music on, you know. I know for me, when I'm actually in like thinking work kind of mode, I, I don't want music or things like that on. I want it to be quiet. Maybe you need it to be distraction free. So if you have, you know, kids or people running around, maybe it's like, you know what, you guys, I need half an hour right now, I'm doing something really important, set yourself up, turn your phone off, notifications, whatever it is, so that it works for you. And if you forget everything that I've just shared with you, here's the one thing that's going to make this easier for you. Realize that this is never ever about you. It is not about you, it is not about your product, it is not about your service. It is about the human being in front of you. It is all about giving, going right back to Bob Berg. If you are feeling salesy, if you are feeling gross, if you are feeling like this is hard and you're pestering somebody and all of those things come up, just stop yourself and say to yourself, this is not about me. It is about the person in front of, in front of me. This is about how can I give value to that person and make their life better? If you can get to that spot where you can take yourself out of this, you know, um, this is going to be so much easier for you. But often we get stuck and it's so easy into this little trap of what are they going to think about me? What if they reject me? What if I don't do this well? and everything is revolving around us. So I'm not even thinking about the person in front of me because I'm so concerned with how I'm going to appear in this interaction and if I'm going to do a good job. But if I can just pull myself out of that and really put my focus on the person in front of me and realize that it's just about them, this will be so much easier for you. So if you forget everything, give value, it's all about the person in front of you. Questions, thoughts, concerns, I have, feedback. I have thoughts. <laughs> I have <Yay>! thoughts. <laughs> I have, the, um, uh, kind of circling back to the Byron Katie stuff, right? Yeah. Like, is it true? Like, that is so helpful. Um, and one of the things, um, the other thing that Byron Katie does, and I was, this is something that I've been noticing, um, 
with some of the people that have expressed this, it feels salesy perspective. It's like, it's because they're being salesy. Exactly. Um, and it's kind of like, <laughs> is this true, right? Like we look at the, is this true on the outside, right? It's, it's like salespeople um, are pushy or obnoxious or pestery or whatever, you know? Um, and the other thing that Byron Katie talks about is that this idea of turning the statement the turn around. around. Yes. And it's like, and then it's like, well, am I being pushy and pestery? Um, and I think that sometimes there's, that can help suss out this kind of projection, right? Because we're going, oh, salespeople, those salespeople are pushy and I don't want to be pushy and I feel salesy and all of this. And it's like, I'm not, but I feel it. And then it's like, hang on a second. Is it true? Like, maybe I am. Maybe I am, right? And it's often because they're locked into the, they're not thinking about it as the other person. It's about, okay, how do I talk about my thing? How do I get them to shut up long enough so I can go on and on and on about this modality that I use and how wonderful it is? Um, and it is salesy. <laughs> and it's, that's why they feel salesy is because they're being salesy. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I find it's easy to get in that spot too, especially if you're coming from a place of desperation. So if you are really counting on a sale, like I have got to, and, it, and this is a hard spot to get out of, right? Because it's like, I have to make this sale. I have bills to pay. I, I need it. And it's so counterintuitive to let that go and be like, I'm unattached to if I make the sale or not because I'm going to switch over to just being of service and value and no is an acceptable answer when you're like, it's not an acceptable answer. You better buy this and I'm going to close this. And when you look at coming from that space, yeah. Am I being salesy? Yes. And yeah, I love that. Is it it? Yeah. Often we feel salesy because we just might be. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's just, you know, all like when you think about it, it's like all of that kind of, negative mind chatter stuff happens when we're focused on ourselves. Exactly. Um, you know, ask me how I know that. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like, it's like, oh, what do I say? I'm nervous about doing this. How are they going to respond? It's, it's, um, it's, it's all of that stuff. That's the stuff that holds us back. And we're not thinking about that other person. No. And this happens at such an unconscious level. Like, honestly, it's just running and we're, we're often not even aware um, that, that it's even going on. So if we can increase our own self-awareness to realize, oh, I'm catching it now, right? We'll get better and better at catching it, but often it's, it's just happening and we don't even know it. And that's where I think it's, if you can sort of get that trigger feeling, oh, I'm feeling salesy and go, oh, is it true? Oh, shit, it actually might be. Hmm, okay. It's creating that gap and that space. So it's, it's not often easy and it's practice, right? Again, pra practice looking for these things. Practice running yourself through these questions. Yeah. Oh, man. And, and it's the value piece, right? Like I'm giving, like having that belief, I'm giving value. It's, I see this with, with the, um, there are people that are doing assessments, right? The people that, um, truly believe that the assessment gives value um are excited to offer it yes because it's a gift it's like here's a gift it's awesome um i you know i really want to give you this gift it is it's like it's kind of like they're running around town like santa claus it's like hey i have gifts i have <laughs> gifts i have gifts right and then what happens right they get testimonials from from their from their assessment they get these happy emails back and it creates this beautiful virtual spiral where it's like, I'm giving a gift. Yes, you are. It's a gift. It's an amazing gift. I'm giving a gift. Yes, you are. It's an amazing gift. And it's just like, and it's this beautiful feedback loop that, that shifts the belief. Um, but you know, the assessment is part of what, what's beautiful about the assessment is that it puts the focus on the other person. Exactly. It's a self assessment. It, it, it's for them and their selves and, yes. and you facilitate it. And um, so it's a gift of clarity and it's about it, it, it like in some ways it, like it really like if you do it well it's focusing on the other person like we're going to do this, this thing and this thing is all about you um, so it provides that uh, the structure 
it's, so it's, it's like a, a way to remember to keep it on people. Exactly. Exactly. And I think when, whenever you're doing it, it's like, if you, as long as you're like, I hope I do this well, what's my next question? If you learn to slide into that place of just being with the person, which you'll do just fine at, you yeah. do start to see, oh, wow, this is really valuable. This is really helping them. And then the more you do, the more excited you get about, like you say, it's a gift. It's a gift. I've got a gift. I can help you. I can help you. It's so yeah. It's so perfect. I think that's one of the reasons I love it so much because it does make, it makes the sales conversation easier. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I have something really valuable to give people. I can help people just by offering this free assessment. This free assessment can help people actually get more of what they want in their life. Whether they work with me or not doesn't really matter. But just by doing that gives them something that's so beneficial. Yeah. You don't think it too, right? Like when we think about giving a gift, providing value, right? Like even taking this, this idea that, okay, we're going to have a sales conversation or just any kind of conversation. Doesn't even have to be a sales conversation. Yeah. Doesn't have to be an assessment. It's just a conversation. I'm going to give something, right? Exactly. It's like, I'm Santa Claus. I got stuff, right? It's, I think you start to be a little bit more discerning too, because when you have gifts, it's like, you want to give the gift to somebody who's going to appreciate the gift. Yes. You're going to want to match the gift to the person. It's not, oh, there was a sale on long underwear. Everybody's getting long underwear. It's all exactly the same size and same color. Everybody's getting long underwear. It's like, here's a gift. And like, whether or not they appreciate it or not, you don't care, right? Like, you, you want to get exactly. away from that kind of spraying it all over the place. Instead, think, okay have long underwear. It's the best long underwear in the world. Who needs a gift to long underwear, right? Exactly. Well, and that's that shift about too, I'm thinking about the other person as opposed to myself. I have something everybody should have. Everybody's getting it. Whether they want it or not, I don't care. This is about me, 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 me telling you how great this long underwear is. Right. Instead of like, wait a second, who could actually use this long underwear, would appreciate this long underwear? Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like, oh, is this is this for my friend in northern Manitoba, or is yeah. this for my friend in Hawaii? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like I don't care. They're both getting it. <laughs> I'm getting rid of this long underwear. <laughs> and I think that that kind of discernment is really important too. Like when you approach from this giving mindset. It, it kind of takes a lot out of you. We were talking about that right before we got on yeah. this call, right? Is we only have so much bandwidth. We only have so much time to be able to be in conversation with people and to give these gifts. And then as you do it and as you get more familiar with it, you can be a little like discerning. It's like, okay, who's like, okay, just saw 20 people. Who is the one that this gift is perfect for? Exactly. Not how do I get this into 20 people's hands? Exactly. Who's the one, right? The and, or is there anybody? Or maybe do I need to go into the next room and I need to meet another 20 people in order to find the one that this gift is perfect for? And I think when we start looking at that um, as part of our approach, that exactly. that increases this your level of success. 100%. Having better conversations with people. Um, and, and making it easier. And I think this is from the introvert perspective, right? The extrovert's like, yeah, 20 people, I'm gonna talk to 20 people. And <laughs> as my introvert, I'm like, I don't have enough bandwidth for 20 people, like no way, no how. Um, however, I've got plenty of bandwidth for a couple of those people, right? Exactly. And this is where having that space of being curious, asking questions, doing that discovery, you'll find the people that this is the perfect gift for. But without listening and asking them questions, you won't know. You're just making that, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. You have to have a conversation with somebody from Hawaii that explains what the climate's like there. And, um, you know, and, and about um, the, the not, not having a requirement for the long underwear exactly. stuff, right? And who knows? Maybe it gets really cold at some nights in Hawaii. <laughs> I don't even know. You might learn something that you hadn't even discovered before. Entirely possible. Being kind of an extrovert, so, uh, I'm like, like I'm not talking to people in Hawaii because I don't think they're going to buy the long underwear. I'm going to talk to people in northern Manitoba because I'm pretty sure that they'll be into it. 
I would pretty you're a pretty safe bet there, I would say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, I like this message from the chat. I completely agree that the assessment is a gift. I've gotten a lot of testimonials for my assessment, which makes it so much easier to be excited to offer my assessment sessions. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's and it's really interesting, like for that when people discover that, um, <laughs> you know, we, we have we got somebody, uh, one of, another one of our clients forwarded us a, a message uh, that they got from an assessment and they were like resistant to doing the thing. Right. And it's just like they get a note back saying, oh, my God, this is life changing. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, see, see. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We're all about making this easy for you guys. Like really, you know, and having something valuable that you share with people makes this giving way of doing, you know, sales and outreach so much easier. Yeah. And it ripples through, right? Like it, it just, it just ripples through. Like yeah. you, you start, like we talked about sales conversations today. We talked about the asset. We're always talking about the assessment, but it, it is, this is true of, you know, content marketing of um, creating videos, of creating uh, blog posts and articles. It's like when you look at like um, clickbait, which is writing a sexy title for a piece of fluff or a piece of sales material, right? Um, it, that's about getting. It's about getting the click. It's about getting the views. It's about tricking people, really. It's a bait and switch kind of a thing um, versus providing really good and useful information to the people who who want to hear it or need to hear it basically. Um, so when you approach content marketing that way, it's like, yeah, I'm going to go on Facebook Live and be as helpful as possible. They're like, this is what we do every week. And they're like, hey, let's uh, show up and be as helpful as possible. Once a week, we're going to be as helpful as possible. Exactly. And it's not about, you know, selling our stuff. We might share with a little bit of enthusiasm the fact that Bob Berg is showing up in two weeks, you know, and, and that's a gift too. It's, yes. you know, this is a go-giver gift to the go-giver for the go-giver for all the go-giver <laughs> people because it's free <laughs> and there's not going to be any sales pitch on that, on that call either. No. Um, it, it's like, how do you, how do you give some value? Exactly. And, and then that makes that fun and it makes, we get excited about showing up here on Wednesday morning because we get to share something that's valuable for people. Exactly. Um, so then the marketing becomes fun and marketing is not fun. Uh, you know, it's not one of the things I noticed for me, it's not fun when I think about getting, it's not fun when I'm like, ah, oh, how do I get subscribers? How do I get people to open it? How do I get people to share it? How do I get people to read it? Um, how do I get likes, get followers, get, subscribers like get 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 and it feels like shit exactly exactly and it's such a common conversation um that we hear just in general in our in our world today yeah it's it's, it's, it's all about that it's all about how do i get that. bigger numbers exactly bigger exactly. numbers more followers, more likes, more people on my Facebook page. How do I make an impact by reaching billions of people? Um, and it's not about those billions of people, you know, the people who talk about, it's not about those billions no. of people. It's about the ego behind it. And it's like, oh, I want the world's biggest email list. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And maybe take a step back and be like, well, what am I giving? What am I giving to those billions of people? You know, like, if anything at all, or if it's, is it just that mindset of, of getting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If I think about a lot of the questions that, that we get a lot of the, the headlines, I mean, we've done it too, right? How to get more clients. <laughs> exactly. Give more. <laughs> yeah. It, it seems, you know, and, and, and I mean, and this is, we will talk to Bob Berg more yeah. about this, yeah, you know, the flip side of it is, you know, for those of us who are like, oh yeah, I'm going to hop up on that giving bandwagon because I like, I love that idea. Um, it can, it can really mess with the, uh, the financial viability of your business because yes. you can't give everything away. And that's one of the lines that you have to kind of draw. It's like, okay, where's the line between the stuff I give away for free um, and the stuff I charge for? And, 
one of the things that he mentions in his book. It's like this giving thing is not about being a martyr. It's not about giving everything away and not charging people. It's not about not charging decent exactly. money for what you do. It's just making sure that that value equation is that they get more value than they're paying for. And that value is not determined by you. The value is determined by the person who is receiving it, uh, which is a really, really important dist distinction for us to draw. Because when you give more value than you're being paid from, from your perspective, you run into resentment pricing. That's where you're putting in more hours than is sustainable in your business in order to meet a client's promise, right? But the value is in what, in what the client gets. And a lot of what they get doesn't come from time and sessions and stuff. What they get comes from results and breakthroughs and healing and improvement and whatever it is that you're offering. Like that's the additional value they're getting. It, yes, it's coming from your intervention, but it's not, um, it, it, it's not necessarily coming from your time. Yeah, exactly. Like that clarity piece. I think, I mean, the assessment's even a great example of that, right? Like look at how much value comes out of that assessment and often it is in that form of clarity yeah like things that you can't um you know this much time gives you this much clarity it doesn't work like that yeah and it, it's, it's not you know the value isn't coming from fixing stuff the value isn't coming from giving your stuff away I mean, you know no. that's one of the corrections we're always having to make so yeah. don't give the stuff away don't give the advice don't don't jump into a coaching session it's like there's value in the clarity um and that you know, and it's, and it, you know, in exchange for zero money, it's an incredible value. <laughs> yeah, yeah, incredibly huge, exactly. It's costing them some time, yeah. but the clarity has an incredible value, and it's, yeah. it's like you can give, um, and then you can, you know, that, you know, the, what is it, the fifth law or whatever, being open to receive <laughs> on the other receive. end. The law of receptivity, yeah, exactly, being open, because and yeah, I love that actually how he talks about in the book, right? If there's, it's always both, right? It's giving and receiving, giving and receiving. So you have to be open to that as well, not just give, 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 give. That doesn't work. It's yeah, and that feels that feels like shit for your client too, right? Because yeah. they feel uncomfortable. There's this place where it's like, okay, you just you're just giving too much. Now I'm uncomfortable. I need to pay. Exactly. You know, and I, I've, I've been in that situation. I've had people say, Patty, you need to charge me something. Uh, and, and I've pushed relationships away by giving too much because I'm not willing to charge. And then they, they reach this point where it's like, I'm not asking you anymore because you're going to give me something for free. And that's going to feel like shit. Exactly. It's like you, you need to enable kind of the two-way flow. <laughs> exactly. So true. Well, even, and even when I think about, um, which this came up this week as well, too, with where it was like, well, I want them to tell me what they want to pay me. Yeah. I want to put that responsibility on them instead of me taking ownership of that. Make it easy for people. Yes. And, like people want to, to pay you. They want your service. That's a roadblock when you go, oh, well, you know, you just, you let me know what, what, what you think. That's hard. <laughs> it's really hard. And it puts a responsibility on somebody and they're, and they're like, like, A, you're making them think too hard. B, they're, they're going to run the risk of naming the wrong number. And like, there's no win there. They name no. a number too low, they offend you. They name a number too high and they overpay. Like, there's no win in that for the other person. No. no. Like... Yeah, that's a really that's a really good point. Like it's it's a it's a gift of clarity to actually name your price. It is because then I know, right? It's not like like I even think of these. You know, sometimes you go to these donation only things or whatever, and I'm like, oh man. And if I know the person, then I really feel bad because I don't know <laughs> what's the appropriate donation for this. What's gonna make me look cheap or what's enough what's not enough especially if i'm not sure like i would way rather just tell me the just give me a price just tell me it's 50 bucks great here's the 50 bucks like whatever it yeah. is you know it's it's easier yeah and if it's by donation it's really helpful if the if they say suggested donation exactly give me something to go on it's like give this case guide. 
pay what you can, pay what you want kind of thing. It's like, you know, it's $200 thing. Like, yeah. you know, we would, we would charge 200 bucks for this. Exactly. That's a feel good number for us. Um, if that's outside your budget, we still want to make it accessible. Um, and anything is okay. Exactly. And I've even seen them, you know, it's a scale. Less than 50 bucks, we're going to feel ripped off. So yeah. <laughs> we're not going there. Uh, you know, 200 is our happy price. 50 is a, is a, is a floor. Um, somewhere in between is awesome. Exactly. Um, at least that gives you, gives you some, some, uh, Clarity. Yeah, some clarity, right? It yeah. makes it easier. That's uh, not ex that's not where I expected our conversation to go today. But. I know. Well, it always goes where it goes, right? <laughs> it goes where it goes. Um, another comment in the chat. Thank you for presenting this perspective of giving rather than getting. I've been derailed in the past by the perspective that I don't really have a business because I'm not focused on profit and scaling up rather than service. My work is personal, one on one, and I delight in witnessing transformation. Awesome. I think you're going to like next week's um, show. Mm -hmm. You want to pull the slides up again? That oh, was yeah. just such a perfect segue um, for coming oh, soon. Oops. Wait a second. I've done something. Da -da 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 -da. Share my screen. <laughs> Del oh, look. Classic Facebook's going away soon. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you can tell I don't drew the slides that off. <laughs> coming soon. All right, next week, this is something that we shared in our Momentum group um, yesterday, uh, the Yes Yes Box, and I'm like all excited, excited about the Yes Yes Box, because it's boxes and <laughs> arrows. Uh, uh, next. Okay. This is for those, th th my introvert friends, the people who say that they are in relationship and transformation um, and they don't want to put their face all over the internet and they don't want it to be about getting this one is for you. Um, I came to this epiphany this morning. This is fresh, hot, uh, with my morning coffee epiphany that most marketing is a waste of time, effort and money um, and there's a better approach and it comes in the SES box and that's what we're talking about next week. Um, I think that this is going to be kind of earth-shaking information for some people um, and it's directly um, in alignment with what Bob Berg will be talking about click um, on the ninth <laughs> the, what he says and the yes yes box just like it's like it's like a marriage it's like awesome uh, so we'll, we'll uh, uh, have our conversation with Bob Berg on the ninth and then on the 12th Click. Uh, we have the Relationship Marketing Intensive, which is going to be all about go-giving and the SES yes box and what to say and who to talk to and getting it done um, all in one day, getting feedback, kind of butt in chair doing um, workshops. So that's coming up on the 12th. All that info is at ushapebusiness.com and I don't have a link for the thing, but uh, just to let you know, it's there, ushapebusiness.com and uh, I think that's a wrap. Uh, let's see. Will this be useful in more than what you shared in Momentum about the Yes Yes box? Yes. This is an extension of the Yes Yes box. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And the Yes Yes box is going to be a core component of the relationship uh, marketing intensive as well. Yeah. Uh, so yes. Yes Yes. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. And on that note, yes, yes, it's 1030. <laughs> yes, yes, it's 1030. Have a wonderful rest of your week and we will see you uh, back here next Wednesday. Same bat time. Same bat channel. All right. Bye. Bye. For now.